Today I'm going to take a little bit different approach to our hook of the week. Usually I pull a piece of material out of the bucket and decide what am I going to make with this piece of material. Today on the other hand, I'm starting with an idea and this idea comes from the Black Bear Forge Facebook group and Rudy posted a hook he had made. It's a three piece hook and I really liked his design so I'm going to do my interpretation of his design. Now this is not an exact copy of his because I'm still using the material that is in the bucket and I'm still limited by what's available there so I don't have exactly the same material and exactly the same size as he used and for that matter I don't actually know exactly what the material sizes he used on his project were because it doesn't matter this is what I've got that's as close as I can come. So this is a three piece hook that Rudy had made and Again, I don't know what materials he started with. I'm going to start with some half inch square bar, 13 millimeter square bar. And this is about five inches long or 130 millimeters long. And I have two pieces of this. I would rather have one longer piece for the hook, but I just don't have it. So we're gonna change the hook a little bit from what his looked like. His was a very nice contemporary or industrial looking hook that was fairly much full dimension of the material for most of the hook. But I'm going to have to draw this out, make it a little thinner, a little bit more graceful, even though I really liked his design. And I may make one like that sometime, starting with all new material instead of going out of the bucket. But anyways, that's what we've got. It needs a standoff. I'll cut that out of this. There'll be a, a punched hole, mortise and tenon joint in this, and then a back plate and this back plate that I have now, the only piece that's suitable is about two inches by inch and a quarter. Again, half inch thick. So that's 13 millimeters by 33 millimeters by 50 millimeters, roughly. So let's head over to the forge and let's make a hook. Just because the gas forge has already been moved out of the coal forge so I can work here on another project, we're gonna go ahead and work in the coal forge today. Or actually it'll be a mix of coal and charcoal because I did find a bag of charcoal that was available, so we might as well make some use out of it, and it doesn't really hurt to mix them too much. First thing we're gonna work on, I think, is the back plate, just to get it drawn out. It's gonna be the heaviest amount of work in the whole project, so we will start with that first. Now this would be a wonderful thing to do under the power hammer, but I'll do it by hand. And as it gets bigger, it will be easier to hold on to and less likely to get lost in the fire pot. Using the cross pin for more control. quite pleased with how much volume or more surface area I'm getting out of this piece. It's going to end up being plenty big enough. Oftentimes in blacksmithing it's worth resizing the material you have instead of heading for town, in my case anyways, and buying new material. Leaving it thick in the middle to give more for the tenon to hold on to, but thinning it out on the edge just to get more spread and make a better looking back plate. A 
at this point you just have to decide do you want nice crisp lines on the side or do you want it to be kind of free form I want to go for a little bit more refined look so I'm gonna just work this until I get a nice even edge both top and bottom or sides in top bottom all four sides And of course, if you need to, you can file or grind to clean up the edges. I'm going to try to avoid that just to save time. I'm trying to leave a piece, a flat area in the middle here where the tenon will go through. So there is our little back plate. I'm going to want to put a square hole in the middle and I'm punching a square hole because a square tenon will be less likely to twist not that you couldn't make a round tenon good and tight and be okay with it but this is just a little better I would prefer to finish this from the front, except that I want the taper from the punch to create a tapered hole. So I'm going to try and finish it from the back, which means there'll be a little cleanup with all this scoring from around the hardy hole or the pritchel hole. My hardy hole is not as sharp, which is why I came over there. A bolster with the right size square hole in it would be ideal. Look at that, I had a bolster that I'd completely forgotten about. After a while you get enough tools you do start to lose track of what you have and where you left it. But in any case, there's our square hole. I just want to make sure this is going to touch the wall all the way around when it's installed. You saw those little sparks shoot across the anvil. It's just one of the downsides to charcoal sometimes. Especially the store-bought stuff seems to do that. So this is done, and I'm going to set it aside to cool while we work on the little standoff, I think. I'm going to start this just by setting a shoulder with some butchering dies in the smithing magician here. I'm going to put a square tenon on this ultimately. That's way more material than I need, but sometimes it's easier to trim than it is to worry about it right from the start. I'm just going to rough forge that tenon in for now. get too close up to the shoulder because I don't want to damage the shoulder. So to make sure that gets done neat and clean, I'll go to a set of tuning dies and the smithing magician that will get right up there to the shoulder. Yeah, it's got a good bounce to it. 
Not really the idea. This is the bolster plate I was using. It's just barely going to fit in there, so I can adjust things with a file to make that tenon fit better. But I'd rather adjust it than make it too small to start with. The next step in this is actually then to upset that shoulder a little bit so it has some so it has better contact with that back plate. And to do that, we will use the bolster plate. I'll go ahead and file this real quick so that it fits through the bolster plate cleanly, and we'll be ready to go. So just a quick little bit of work with a file and cut the end off with a hacksaw. And that fits in there nicely. So we'll just put that probably over the pritchel hole and go ahead and upset that end. Now Rudy had commented that he had wished he had made a bigger upset on his hook at this end. So we'll probably take a couple of heats to complete this. Plus you've got to straighten it out a little here and a little there. This isn't a bad place to just go to the torch for heat. But not everybody's got a torch, so we'll do it the coal fire here. I just want to clean this up a little bit. I think the upset is good. Just want to make sure I've got a nice square shoulder. And some of that can be done later with a file. Another advantage to the square tenon, it's pretty easy to file. Okay. Let's turn this around and figure out how long we want that off the back plate. So with the upset done on the little arm or the standoff there, I have to decide where I want the hook to be. I don't want it way out here. I'm going to put it somewhere in there. So I want to take about half of this off when I cut it. As long as we got the smithing magician around, we're just going to go ahead and cut that off in here. And I'll throw this piece back in the hook bucket, but I don't know if it's going to be much good for anything. And we'll start a tenon on this one. Took a little bit less material because I knew I wouldn't need as much as I had the last time. Yeah, it was way too much. Just go back to the tenoning dies. I'm going to be a little different on this end. I'm going to actually put a round tenon on here. And the reason that I'm not making this one square is that I don't have a square monkey tool. I really need to make a set of square monkey tools sometime. But by using this bolster that we used for the first end, I can put the monkey tool over here. And this is how I will upset the second end. Looks like I still need to adjust that tenon down a little bit. The monkey tool is hanging up. I'll just go back into the tenoning dies. If necessary, do just a little bit of filing on there. I think the tenoning dies are a little worn and starting to oversize the tenon a little bit. Like I say, better to adjust with a file than it is to have it too small. Yeah, 
Now that goes in nicely, so let's go back and do that again. So let's see if this goes a little bit better this time. I'm mostly concerned about a nice flat shoulder here, more so than I am a uh, big upset. I like that this ends up being tapered a little bit instead of just an upset on each end. So that's going to be our little standoff. Now let's make the hook. An actual hook! And that'll be out of this piece. So I'm going to draw this out into a parallel taper, starting over the horn. Now I'm going to leave the end of it where I'm going to put the whole full square bar, but it's not long enough to leave the whole bar square, even though Rudy's original hook was square. We got a fairly thin end because I'm going to go ahead and put a curl in the end. Rudy's hook had a little upset on the end. I really kind of like that. But you've got to use what's in the bucket. And this is what was in the bucket. There's our little curl, and we'll use our little hook bending jig here to bend this. I think I'll go a little further. That's pretty good. So I'm going to put a hole in for that standoff. I'm just going to eyeball where I think it's going to look right. I'm using a punch a little smaller diameter than the tenon on the standoff and I'll drift it a little bit larger. That also means this punch will need to be cooled down regularly. Got it way over here so the hook goes under the horn of the anvil. The only place it fits. And hopefully that went all the way through so I don't have to try to find a bolster plate that will fit over as well. And it did. So the next thing to do is going to be to drift that. This is a little bit crooked from the initial punching. So with the drift in there, I can pretty safely work that down some. Yeah. That should now fit our round tenon. Let's put an upset on the top there so that looks good.
I've got some extra jaws in here that have a little bit of a radius so I don't scar this up as bad. Just kind of make that the upset you want to see on your hook. All right, we've got our hook. And that almost fits. I'll need to run a drill bit through there to make sure that tenon fits through. But I think before we put the hook on that standoff, I want to put the standoff on the back plate. I think it'll be a little bit easier to just set this on the anvil while we do the hook. So I think we're going to do this first. And I think we'll do that in the vise, but I'll go ahead and heat this in the forge. A torch would be an excellent way to do this, but again, not everybody has a torch, so we'll just do it, try to heat only the tenon in the forge. And I have already used the bench punch to punch the holes of the corners cold. I didn't want to hot punch them because I didn't want to deform the edges. And I don't have a hot punch that small. That's awfully delicate for a hot punch. So I went ahead and just did that cold on the Whitney punch. You could certainly drill them under a drill press. Those will fit number eight wood screws. The vise with the soft jaws to try and protect it. It's cooling off quickly while I get the back plate ready, but it's still hot enough. And I want to flush rivet on this because it's got to sit up next to the wall. This is why a tapered punch with a tapered hole from the back side works so well. pretty good. Now a round tenon through a round hole, as long as it's good and tight, nobody's trying to turn it, should hold just fine. But if you're concerned about it, you can take a square punch in the front of the, the hole, make sure it doesn't go all the way through the piece, and just drive it in there cold, as long as it's a hard, harder punch than the material. And you can see that creates a little bit of a square profile here. When you upset the tenon, it will fill those little corners in, and that will help keep that from turning. Okay, that's mostly just the tenon hot. And just to keep my hand away from that bar, I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of tongs. And, of course, I get that crooked. So I went ahead and heated that with a torch anyways. Sorry about that. That makes for a much better looking rivet. And there's a little bit of angle in here that I don't think hurts too much, but you can heat up with a torch under here and bring this, make this standoff drop down a little bit. But in general, that's that's the idea for the hook. I think I would change a few things if I were to make more of these. Well, here's our finished hook based on Rudy's design. A few things about this one are different. Rudy's was square bar all the way to the end with an upset on both ends. I didn't have enough material in the bucket to do it that way, so we drew it out and made a taper. Looks good either way, but I think I still prefer the square bar that Rudy did first. So if I ever make more of these starting with new material, that's probably what I'll do. I did take a little bit more time and square this up so that looks a lot better there. Generally more happy with the hook with this coming straight off. The other thing I would change besides leaving this square is I think I'd make that standoff maybe a half inch shorter. It just seems like it sticks out a little bit further than I would like. I really like the way this tapered back plate ended up. I think that's a real nice effect. Probably a bit of overkill for a hook of the week hook, but nevertheless, it's something I'll probably use again in another project. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.